Measuring segments. The distance between points A and B is the absolute value of the difference of their coordinates. So I want you to take a look at this diagram. Don't get confused. The capital letters A and B are there to denote the two points that we're talking about and the segment AB. The lowercase letters are just variables representing the coordinates. So when I ask you to find the length of segment AB, this actual statement is summarized in this. If you just put the two endpoints without any symbol above it, there's no line, segment, or ray symbol above it, this itself is actually asking you to find the length of segment AB. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to take the difference, subtract the two coordinates, and then take the absolute value. Now remember, absolute value is the distance a number is away from zero. So distance is always a positive number. You never measure anything in a negative number. You don't say, I live negative two miles away from school, or I'm negative four foot seven inches tall. So distance is always positive. Think about it that way. So here we're going to work out a couple different examples. We have one example type with a number line and another example type with coordinate points given. I'm going to work out one of each with you and then I'm going to have you pause and work out the rest. So for this very first one, we have this coordinate line and then we're going to use the information given to find the length of segment AB. So we need to take the absolute value of the coordinate of A minus the coordinate of B and another absolute value mark. Now remember, when you have minus a negative, that becomes plus a positive. So we actually have the absolute value of negative 3. Now absolute value of negative 3 means we want the distance negative 3 is away from 0. So our final answer is going to be 3. So the length of segment AB is 3 units long. Now in the second set of examples, instead of being given a number line, we're just given coordinate points for each of our variables. So we're going to find this in the same way. FE, you want to take the coordinate points F and E. We're going to take the absolute value of coordinate F minus the, uh, the coordinate for E and then absolute value symbol. Negative 13 minus 4, that gives us negative 17. Now again, how far away is negative 17 away from 0? That's going to be 17 as our final answer. So go ahead and press pause. I want you to find all the other answers and then check back with me to see if you got them right. Hopefully you got the length of segment BD is 4, CA is 6, HG is 30, and EH is 13. If you didn't get those, check your work with mine and then see where you might have made a mistake. Here we want to talk about the segment addition postulate. Now remember, last time we talked briefly at the end about postulate. These are rules in geometry accepted without proof. So what the segment addition postulate says is if point B is between A and C, so here we have point B on a line between A and C, then the length of AB, the length of this segment, plus the length of BC, the length of this segment, is going to be equal to the length of AC, the whole segment. So if we just look at this diagram, think about it very plainly. We're adding segments. So if you take the segment AC and break it up at point B, this segment plus this segment equals the entire length of the segment. Now let's work out a couple examples. Here we have this problem. It says suppose J is between H and K. Use the segment addition postulate to solve for X. Then find the length of each segment. So I just want to draw myself a little diagram. Generally with geometry, whenever you don't have a picture given to you, it's helpful to draw one for yourself. So we have J is between the points H and K. Now, they're telling us HK is equal to 2X plus 5. So, or sorry, HJ. So I just want to label HJ as 2X plus 5. 
And then it says that JK is equal to 3x minus 7. So segment JK is 3x minus 7. And it tells us that the segment KH, the whole thing, this is going to be 18. Now, remember what we talked about on the page before. The segment addition postulate says this segment plus that one equals the whole thing. So that's exactly what we're going to write down. How long is HJ? We don't know exactly, but it's 2x plus 5. And then we want to add the other smaller segment, represented by 3x minus 7. And that equals the whole thing, which is 18. Now, the geometry is what helped us set up the the diagram and set up the equation. Now we're going to rely on our algebra skills to solve. So the first thing we want to do is we want to combine the like terms. 2x plus 3x is 5x. And then we get 5 minus 7 gives us negative 2 equal to 18. And then we need to isolate the variable. So add 2 to both sides. And then we get 5x is equal to 20. Now, to isolate the variable, we divide by 5 on both sides. Then we get x is equal to 4. Now, here's one part of our answer. It says to solve for x. The next part, it says to find the length of each segment. We know that kh is 18, so we just need to find the length of hj and jk. So what I'm going to do is for hj, I'm going to substitute in our value for x. So 2 times 4 plus 5. 2 times 4 is 8 plus 5. That gives us 13 for hj. And then we want to do the same thing to find jk. We're going to substitute in 4 for x. 3 times 4 is 12 minus 7. So we get jk equals 5. Now, a way to check yourself to make sure you did this correctly, all the algebra work, is to use the segment addition postulate. hj plus jk should equal kh. So 13 plus 5 does equal 18. So we checked our work. Go ahead and press pause. I want you to try the second example check back with me and see if you got it right. Hopefully you got x equals 4, hj equals 12, and jk equals 3. And when you check your answer, 12 plus 3 does equal 15. If you didn't get that correct, then go ahead and pause, check your work with mine, and see where you might have made a mistake. Congruent segments. This is a symbol for congruent. You want to know it, so learn it well. It's an equal sign with a little squiggly above it. And what it means to be congruent is if two segments have the same length, then the segments are congruent segments. This means that if the length of AB is equal to the length of CD, then we can say that segment AB is congruent to segment CD. Likewise, you can also say that if segment AB is congruent to segment CD, then the length of AB is equal to the length of CD. So there's just a difference in how we're talking about the segments. Here we have segment AB is measured one inch. Segment CD is measured one inch. So we can say the length of segment AB is equal to the length of segment CD. Now, on the flip side, if you just have segment AB with this one tick mark on it and segment CD with the one tick mark on it, that tick mark tells us that those two segments are the same length. We don't know exactly how long they are because we don't have the exact measurements, but all we know is that they are the same length. So we can say that segment AB is congruent to segment CD. Those are the different ways that we'll use equals when those are actual measurements versus the congruent symbols to just talk about the segments themselves. Here we have two different terms, midpoint, the point that divides the segment into two congruent segments. It bisects the segment. So think about 
bisect cut into two equal parts, okay? And then the segment bisector, which is a segment, ray, line, or plane that intersects a segment at its midpoint. So think about it this, this way. The midpoint is the point exactly in the middle of the segment. The segment bisector is the thing, the geometric figure, that divides that segment at the midpoint. So here, what is the midpoint of segment AB? So we have segment AB, and you see from A to M, this is marked with one tick mark. From M to B, it's marked with one tick mark. That tells us that this segment and this segment are exactly the same. So if those two parts are the same, that means this point M must be the middle. So point M is the midpoint of segment AB. What is the segment bisector of AB? So what is the geometric figure that actually cuts it in half? And that's this line. So we want to say line CD is the segment bisector. And again, you could have put line DC, and that would be the same. Here, it says that L is the midpoint of KM. And it tells us to draw a sketch first to help us with these problems. So first, again, we're going to draw a sketch. Now this is similar to before. L is the midpoint of segment KM. But this time, M, L is exactly in the middle, so we can put these tick marks. And then example one asks, KL, this segment, is congruent to what other segment? This has one tick mark. LM has one tick mark. So we're going to say that KL is congruent to LM. Now we're going to take that same idea. I'm just going to use a different colored pen and use the same diagram. It tells us that KL is 9.5 centimeters. Now it wants to know how long is segment LM and KM. So LM is the same as KL. So this is also going to be 9.5 centimeters. And then it asks for KM, which is the whole segment. So if one side is 9.5 and the other side is 9.5, then all we need to do is add those together and we'll get 19 centimeters. I want you to take that same idea of this one and I want you to try this last problem on your own. Be really careful, might be a little challenging, but go ahead and work it out and check back with me and see how you did. So this problem involved quite a bit of work. First, you should have drawn your diagram with K, L, and M, and L right in the middle. And once you label, you have 3x plus 2 and 5x minus 10. Now, in order to find the length of KM, you want the actual length if you can find it, which the final answer is 40. Now, you don't know how long each of these is, but you do know that KL and LM are congruent. That means their lengths are exactly the same. So we can set up the equation 3x plus 2 equals 5x minus 10. And then when you solve that equation, you get x equals 6. Now that's not your final answer, but that is going to help us determine the length of Km. So we're just going to take that value of x and substitute it back into Kl, and we get 20. And if you want to double check your answer, you also substitute it in for x for Lm, and you also get 20 which is good because these two, you want them to be exactly the same, then the length of the entire segment, that's going to be 40. Now that's all for today. And remember, if you had any questions during the lesson at all, make sure you fill out the question form on the website and submit it so that we can go over in class.